In this video, I'm going to be going over the psychological aspects that you need to be aware about to overcome your anger, rage, and frustration in Fortnite. I don't know about you guys, but I really want to improve at Battle Royale, and I've been in all of those situations where you get clapped or you get pretty much outplayed or you just make a simple mistake that leads to your elimination and then you just get angry or you get frustrated or you start raging and that can basically stop you from playing the game from improving at the game and also from just enjoying the game in general nobody likes to feel frustrated when playing Fortnite. Nobody wants to be angry when playing the game and everybody wants to hold back their anger and control it and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do just that. The video is going to be lengthy because this isn't your typical how to not get tilted video. I'm going to be talking about real psychological aspects and real things that you need to become aware about so that you stop being a slave to your anger and you actually use your anger for something positive like improving at the game. So with that said, I want to go over five key statements that you need to be aware about and these five key statements are going to be the next step towards overcoming those raging habits that you have in Fortnite and start becoming a better player or just generally enjoying the game more. The first key thing that I want to talk about is that your actions have to match your beliefs. It doesn't really matter how many times you watch this video, how many times you become aware of every single little thing that is causing you to rage and is causing you to get really angry at Fortnite and is therefore disencouraging you from playing the game more because you're angry that you just keep getting clapped over and over again. It really doesn't matter that you believe that you can overcome your anger if your actions are not matching those beliefs. If your actions aren't matching your beliefs, then your brain knows that those beliefs are complete bullshit. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is if you want to overcome, overcome your anger, you need to put in the work. You need to overcome these mental hurdles and you need to start building mindfulness so that you stop reacting and start actually thinking when you get eliminated. I just want to point out that I've been studying the mind for about five to six years so far. And throughout all of these five to six years, I was sort of somewhat aware of some of the things that made me rage. But it wasn't until I started overcoming these hurdles it wasn't until I started building mindfulness to overcome my anger that I actually did overcame my anger. And again, that's why I said that it doesn't matter that you're aware of what is causing you to rage in Fortnite. What matters is that you're putting in the work so that you stop following that specific habit of raging and becoming frustrated with the game. The second key point that I want to make is that your beliefs are not concrete and you need to become aware of that and you need to know that so that you can overcome your anger while playing Fortnite. I've been raging in video games since I was a little kid and the reason for that is it's because I always kept telling myself that and not only did I tell myself that multiple times but my actions always followed up upon that belief. We're going to look at our anger in Fortnite as an animal that we keep on feeding over and over and over again. And of course, the more we feed this animal, the more this animal is going to grow. So what we need to do is we need to starve out this animal. Napoleon Hill said, what the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve. And the only reason why you think that you might not be able to overcome your anger in Fortnite is because you keep feeding your anger over and over and over again. And therefore you keep making that belief in yourself more concrete. That leads me forward to my third key statement. Never underestimate how far your mind is going to go to create a narrative that is going to cater towards your anger. As you try to overcome your anger in Fortnite, you're going to get in a lot of heated situations. As you're playing solos for sometimes hours or as you play the game for hours and you're trying to overcome your anger and you're trying to build mindfulness that is going to stop you from you know, getting frustrated and getting really angry at the game, your mind is going to start tricking you. It's going to start sort of telling you a story and a narrative, and it's going to look for all sorts of reasons on why you're not going to be able to overcome your anger. Again, never underestimate how far your mind will go to give you a familiar feeling, to sort of return you back to that familiarity that the mind loves so much, because that's what the mind is all about, right? The human mind isn't really built for growth, it's built for familiarity. We love familiarity and your mind is going to go very, very far to always keep you within those familiar sites. Let go of the story and concentrate on the goal at hand, overcoming your anger 
when you're playing Fortnite. Fourth key point, don't overestimate your potential and underestimate the obstacle. Overcoming your anger in Fortnite is something that is not going to be easy and it's something that is going to require your attention pretty much non-stop. Like I said earlier, your beliefs are not concrete. So even if you do end up overcoming your anger in Fortnite, chances are that you can definitely return back to those self-sabotaging habits. And that's why you need to have respect over this big hurdle, this big obstacle that you're trying to overcome. And again, that is overcoming your anger at the game as you're playing the game. Be humble and understand that you're about to face a great enemy. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but it's something that I need to point out. Overestimating your potential and underestimating the obstacle is also something that triggers our anger within Fortnite, but we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later in the video. That leads me forward to my fifth point. You're the deciding factor. It all comes down to you. Every single time that you're in a situation where you want to rage or when you want to smack your table or where you want to literally body slam your table and then start doing the worm on top of it, every single one of those situations, you are the deciding factor. You have to build mindfulness. You have to start asking yourself the right questions. You have to find the trigger points and the things that are actually causing you to get triggered, to get all raged up, to get really frustrated. And that leads me forward to the second part of this video, building mindfulness, understanding your anger, your anger better and finding the trigger points that are actually causing you to sort of get really frustrated and really angry at the game. Now, in order to become self-aware of how our anger works in Fortnite, let's talk about how our mind is operating when we are playing Fortnite. So, of course, we can understand the reasons for our anger a little bit better. Now, I'm going to give a really super simplified example because this might confuse a couple of people if I go really, really in depth into it. So when you are playing Fortnite and you're battling someone, build battling or shooting someone, etc., etc., you have a lot of cortisol that is building right inside of your brain, that is shooting up inside of your brain. And cortisol is basically the stress hormone. That's why a lot of you guys might feel very anxious when you're build fighting, or you might even feel anxious when you're just walking around in the world in general. That's something that I definitely struggled with when I first decided to get good at the game. The point is that when you eliminate someone, you know, in a fight in Fortnite, you're gonna get a nice big shot of dopamine shot up your brain, right? And dopamine is basically the feel good hormone. That's why getting an elimination in Fortnite just feels so damn good. But what happens when you get eliminated? Why is it that you get so angry? So let's rewind back a little bit. You're build fighting someone in Fortnite and as you're build fighting them, you have a lot of cortisol sort of built up inside of you. But another thing that you're doing is that you are building up expectations and you're building an end result that you actually want to reach as you are build fighting another person. And this end result is that you want to come out on top. You want to win the build fight. You want to sort of overcome your opponent. But then what happens is you get eliminated and you get even more cortisol shot up into your brain. And of course, since the expectation wasn't met, that's why you're getting triggered. So the first thing that we want to keep in mind is that we need to get into the habit that as we're build fighting someone, we need to understand that the situation and the build battle might not go our way. We might actually get eliminated. And that's why we're going to be asking ourselves these specific questions as we're playing the game. The first question you want to ask yourself is... What happens if I get eliminated right now? What if I don't come out on top? This is basically just training your mind to sort of be okay with the situation and the possible circumstance that you might actually get eliminated. Furthermore, this is also training your mind to understand that expectations that you have within the fight might not be met and that is 100% completely okay. It's just going to give you the self-awareness that you need to stop getting triggered and just move on forward into the next match and focus on your improvement. Lastly, this also teaches the mind that you're underestimating the obstacle. But most importantly, it is also helping you understand that Fortnite is an unpredictable game and a lot of unpredictable circumstances can happen that basically make it so that you don't come out on top. But of course, if you ask yourself, you know, since you ask yourself that question, what if I were to get eliminated during this fight, you have basically just told your mind if something unpredictable happens and or, you know, let's say that you do everything right in a fight and all of a sudden you basically get eliminated, you're going to be okay with it. The next question that you got to ask yourself is, am I going to react or am I going to think after I get eliminated? 
This is basically training your mind to look for the ways that you can improve instead of all of the reasons why you basically got eliminated. Let's say that for some reason it was 100% the game's fault. Well, are you going to react or are you going to think? Are you going to be a slave to your anger or are you just going to move on and move on forward to the next game? Are you going to focus on what you can control or are you going to focus on what you could have not controlled? Now the great Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius said, nothing but what you get from first impressions. That someone has insulted you for instance, that's but not that it has done you any harm. The reason why I say this is because sometimes when we're playing Fortnite we go past first impressions. And this is why sometimes we suffer more in the mind than what we actually suffer in the game. A perfect example of this is the following. You get eliminated in Fortnite. In the game, you just got eliminated because it's a game mechanic. There's always going to be one winner in solos or one team that is going to win on the other game modes like duo squads or team rumble. Now in your mind, you don't really consider the fact that you got eliminated as something that is a part of the game. You go beyond first impressions. In your mind, you got eliminated and this kid is calling you a bot. And not only is he calling you a bot, but he's gonna post that on Twitter and he's gonna let all of his followers know how much of a piece of shit player you are. But the reality is that there's a possibility that the reason why this kid is calling you a bot is because he feels really powerless within his own life. So he wants to make other people's lives miserable so that he feels better about himself. Therefore, that means that that is his problem and not your problem. So since it is his problem that he's calling you a bot, you shouldn't waste your time going beyond first impressions. You shouldn't waste your time putting yourself in the other person's mindset and building up a story of how this person has basically just eliminated you or how this person is achieving dominance over you and saying that he's a better player. No, you just got eliminated. And this is by far the hardest thing that I had to overcome as I was trying to overcome my anger in Fortnite. And it is something that I still struggle with to this day. Going beyond first impressions is actually part of our primal desires. It is literally imprinted into our brains because it was a key part of our survival. You need to understand that when you get eliminated in Fortnite, it's just a part of the game. Be happy that you can move into another game and possibly even have a better game. A game where you win or you outbuild someone or you finally are able to eliminate a player for the first time because you're not that great at the game. The point is that we want to train ourselves to just see the first impression. We got eliminated in Fortnite, that's it, it's time to move on forward to another game. Again, I want to point out that this is very difficult and something that I sometimes struggle with a lot, but it's all about consistency. The more you do something, the more you're going to be able to master it. Like my karate teacher taught me, repetition is the mother of all learning. I want to move on forward to the last section of this video, understanding your anger, the sources of it, and its triggers. And this is by far the most important part of this video, because the truth is that our anger isn't really just coming because of things that happen in Fortnite. It's actually coming from deep aspects of ourselves that we sort of really ignore. Because, of course, as a society, we're not really inspired and motivated to actually find the deep-rooted purpose of our emotions. Anyways, one of the reasons why you might think that your anger is so overwhelming when you're playing Fortnite, and one of the reasons why you might think that you might not overcome it, is because you might not understand it. When you have an overwhelming emotion like depression, anger, and anxiety, and you can't really figure it out, it isn't because you're stuck with it, it's because you don't really have a general understanding and grasp of why it's actually there. So with that said, let's move on forward to the first key question that you want to ask yourself when you're getting pissed off in Fortnite. Is this anger necessary and is it going to make things better? Now, of course, your mind is going to understand that you want to get better at the game or you just want to enjoy the game. So is anger going to help you get better at the game? No. Putting in the work will, putting in practice towards, you know, building practice or editing practice or aiming practice, putting in more hours into the game. You are now putting your anger on the spotlight and you're now making your mind question the purpose of your anger. Your mind is basically going to be trained to recognize that, wait a minute, anger isn't really necessary in this situation. 
it's not really going to help me become a better player. What's going to help me become a better player is keep getting my ass kicked over and over and over again until I become a great player. That's the first step towards overcoming the source and triggers of our anger in the game. Now your mind is actually starting to ask itself, is this anger actually necessary? And that moves us that moves us forward to the next step. As you're getting angry in Fortnite, ask yourself, what are some of the other emotions that you're feeling that are related to this anger? Maybe you feel annoyed. Maybe you feel resentment. Maybe you feel a loss of control. Maybe you feel really sorrowful. Maybe you feel as if your expectations were not met. And then start breaking down those specific emotions. For example, you got really angry. What's another emotion that you feel or, or something that you're feeling? Well, you're feeling annoyed. Why is it that you're feeling annoyed? Well, you're feeling annoyed because the opponent outplayed you. Why did the opponent outplay you? Because you haven't put in the time and you need to keep putting in the time. So what are you going to do? You're going to put in the time. Right there, you are training your mind to be more effective and to actually stop wasting time on emotions that are completely irrelevant when it comes down to your improvement at the game and also your enjoyment at the game. Last but not least, now we move on forward to finding the source of this anger, to finding the source of why we're getting so angry at Fortnite. You want to ask yourself the question, is my brain tying this present emotion to a past experience? Chances are that in a past experience, you just felt really helpless. One of the things that triggered my anger in video games was Ninja Gaiden for the Super Nintendo, I believe. I just kept getting my ass beat over and over again in Ninja Gaiden. I just kept getting destroyed over and over and over again. Oh my goodness, that would get me so freaking mad. So every single time that I was experiencing anger in Fortnite, my brain, because I wanted to be effective, it was trying that, it was tying that present emotion to a past experience. My brain was stuck in the past. It was living a past experience. And since it was living that past experience, it was intensifying my anger in the present moments. You need to build awareness within you and you need to understand that sometimes one of the real reasons why you're really angry at the game or in life in general is because you don't want to feel a feeling of helplessness, a feeling of abandonment, a feeling where you sort of lose control. You guys need to make sure that you find the source of your anger and what it is that it is triggering and why is it that it's of course being triggered. And of course, that is something that is completely up to you guys. I can give you the keys to the door, but it's up to you to open the door. There's going to be multiple times as you try to overcome your anger that you might actually return to that irrational side of yours. It's okay, don't beat yourself up over it. You're pretty much just as human as everybody else. And like I said, your beliefs are not concrete and sometimes you are going to, like I said, return back to those irrational moments. What really matters though, is what you're going to do afterward. Are you going to return back to that rational side of yours or are you going to continue to be on this loop of being a slave to your anger? Last but not least, repetition is the mother of all learning, so make sure that you guys listen to this video multiple times a day so that you program your mind to understand the step-by-step -step progress that it needs to go through so that of course you can overcome your anger. Keep in mind the first five key points that I said at the beginning of the video, understand the source of your anger, build self-awareness, and last but not least guys, make sure that if you found this video helpful that you share it at least with one friend or you share it within your friend group. I made this video to change people's lives. I also made this video because I got sick and tired of getting angry at video games and basically stopping myself from improving at video games because of my anger. I got sick of being a slave to my anger and that's why this video was born. And I want other people to stop being slaves to their anger as well. So a share on the video would be amazing. Anyways, last but not least, if you want more videos on psychological aspects, check out my second channel on YouTube, The Philosopher's Table. See you on the next one. Peace.